Hello, I'm Denshi, and you're probably wondering why am I in a virtual machine with Arch Linux. Well, that will all make sense once I've booted my machine. So I'm booting up into Arch Linux right now, as you can see, starting version that. And uh, here we go, and I'll just, it will automatically log in. And as you can see, we have a little hourglass as our cursor, and we're loaded into the CDE Login Manager. Yes, today I'm going to be taking a look at the CDE or common desktop environment a pretty you know generic name the CDE is essentially the sort of desktop environment in fact I'm pretty sure the exact desktop environment you'd find on old Unix systems so I'm talking from the late to mid mid late 90s actually no the late 90s so I'm gonna log in real quick my username is Alex password is very very not that complicated and here we are CDE or common desktop environment now it probably reminds you of a certain other desktop environment namely Windows 95's desktop environment and Windows 98 because of the non aliased things there's not any example of aliasing besides you know in specific applications and I'll show that later but none of the UI elements are aliased so there is no aliasing anywhere it's pretty interesting in terms of how it works and it, obviously it's not recommended to use mostly because of its such so old you probably shouldn't use it on any 64-bit machine in fact I'll link the arch wiki article on this that warns you know you probably shouldn't use this on a 64-bit machine it's running here on a 64-bit you know VM but it's just generally not recommended at least like I would never use this not that it's even that good to begin with but it's generally you know classic looking and interesting to look at so let's begin so at the bottom you'll notice there's this sort of dock thing there's you know four desktops over here one three well one two actually then three and four they have different patterns so one is just like this gradient thing two is like these rocks three is just another gradient sort of like the C sort of and four is like these weird like pattern blocky pattern isometric thing over here back to desktop one so it has multiple desktops virtual desktops which you know wasn't really a feature in many other you know desktop environments at the time there's some pretty interesting tools here let's take a look at the terminal emulator so here we are it's a terminal emulator pretty much as simple as it gets there's options you can you know change the font size if you really wish to the window size and that's literally it you can copy and paste with the edit menu and the window menu just helps you know close and create a new one so let's launch firefox from here there, I, I haven't really figured out if you can make application links on the desktop but here we are in firefox I was testing out some Minecraft classic because I wanted to see how far this thing could be pushed in terms of a, a VM's power. But as you can see, it runs desktop applications. You might notice the aliasing is a little bit off. I think that's just a VM. I'm not sure. But, you know, I can, you know, open up YouTube or something and go to my YouTube channel and it works perfectly fine. Actually, no, I'll use my special link. The very special Denshi link. This one. There's a special C link that I have that re just redirects to my actual channel. Uh, so yeah, you can browse the web in this desktop environment. It's, it's nothing is really missing here. This is fully functional Arch Linux system. Now, what if I want to close this thing? So you'll you might instinctively try to press this button over here, but what that does is go full screen. You might also want to instinctively press. We'll press it again. It makes it smaller. Uh, also, it doesn't really update sometimes. I told you it's unstable on 64-bit machines. You might want to press this thing, but all that does is pin it. So it pins the little uh, whatever you know you're running. In this case, Firefox. It's very you know, oversized Firefox icon doesn't fit in there and you can double click on it and it reopens. It also gives you more options. If you click on it, you can do things like restore, you can move it and you can move these icons around so you can manage all your windows as like little icons. I think that's pretty original. I've never really seen that in any other desktop environment. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, this button over here is how you actually close things. You click this and then you click as you can see, close or just press Alt F4 as the keyboard shortcut. Anyway, um, let's Neo fetch real quick to prove that this is Arch Linux. As you can see, it's Arch Linux. It's running, you know, pretty well. Um, it's uh, GTK3 mostly because that's all it really detects because GTK stuff has to be installed to run Firefox. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Another interesting thing is the fact that the file manager, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So let's go to our root folder real quick. This is our root folder. As you can see, everything is here. You can click on view and you can do various things. You can open a new view. All that does is opening, open a new like uh, file manager. Let's just quickly close this. You can click view and update. It doesn't automatically update, which is a little weird. You can set filter options. So things like, I don't know, I don't want to see a certain fi type of file. I want to see hidden folders or something like that. So hide, as you can see, dot folders. If we just delete that and apply, we can go to like my home directory or something. 
and you'll see it shows dot files so it doesn't have anything really here i could i don't know make a new folder if i wish to but that kind of stuff would show up anyway uh you can select things like this no uh real selection things the windows contents don't show when you move them around and you get a little um, indicator in the center of the screen there that shows the coordinates of where you're moving the window to. Obviously, as you can see, it flickers, it messes around, mostly because it's not meant to run on 64-bit machines or even 32-bit. It's pretty old. So, uh, yeah, the file manager. There's a tool over here for helping with uh, style, but all of this stuff has to be installed separately. So this is DT style. You need to use the AUR for this kind of stuff. There's this. This is essentially the application manager. So this is where you'll find every single thing sorted very, very well. Desktop apps, there's, you know, not much here. There's a calculator. We can run that. But as you can see, it won't run because the icon's there, but the program isn't installed. It doesn't come with the AUR package group. Education, it should come with the stuff, but, you know, it's not installed. So it's not going to actually run any of it, which is, you know, pretty sad. The system, you know, I believe some of this stuff is here. Synaptic, yeah, that's not installed. VirtualBox, that's definitely not installed. So these icons are here, but the programs aren't actually there, which is a little weird. So let's complete Alt F4, close that. Uh, there's a printing managing thing, because I'm assuming whoever was using this was probably using loads of printers back in, you know, the late 90s. Printers were, well, they're still a thing today, but people must have used more printers back then, because online documents and online sharing was uh, a little bit, you know, in its development phase at the time. Anyway, print manager, you can open that up and found no printers, unsurprisingly. As you can see, there's artifacts over, I don't know if you saw that, like as I drag this window across, it doesn't even want to drag anymore, <laughs> great. I think I've royally messed the thing up, see, you can select things to update, but as you can see, like things mess up, see, it's, it's not very stable, is my point, you have to manually update the screen. Anyway, let's Alt F4, close this program, uh, back to this. There's this thing over here, and that obviously doesn't launch anything. Oh, that's the application manager, sorry. Um, none of these things launch anything, because as I said before, the applications are there. GIMP, all this crusty GIMP icon, very interesting. Uh, this thing over here, also that, as you can see, does not launch, because the program isn't there, yay. Uh, you can do things, all this stuff is just not really here. Help manager, not there. This flashing light, no idea what that does. Literally no idea. Click this exit button, you can log out if you you know wish to. I don't really want to right now. Click this thing, you can minimize the taskbar, double click on that, as if you were doing it with an actual window. You can move it around and stuff, drag it back and it goes back there. Uh, you can click this button to minimize it faster. You can also do things like, I don't know, close it or just log out um, lower, for example. It doesn't do anything because it's very unstable. Refresh if you wish. There's a clock icon, doesn't do anything because the program isn't there. Once again, the calendar isn't there. I don't know what this flashing light is about. Do not ask me what that is. Uh, I think I clicked it, it ended. Okay, interesting. So it's got multiple desktops. As you can see, there's not really much to look at. It does have a trash can. If you want to, I don't know, put things in the trash can, I guess, if you really wish to do that. Let's quickly close this window. So let me give you an example. I'll close the, open up the file manager. And then we, I don't know, create a new file which you can't really do. You can just change permissions, find, select all, show and hit, show hidden objects. There you go. Or open new view, print, which obviously is what you would sort of do. Uh, you can't, I think I have installed Vim on this, so let me give you an example of running Vim in the terminal emulator. So uh, is Vim installed? Yes, it is, okay. So let's quickly um, right quit. Uh, well, actually no, quit, uh, quit, there you go. Uh, let's uh, CD. Do we have a desktop folder? Let's ls real quick. There's not much. Okay, let's um, vim test.txt or something. Let's write test in it. Let's write that and then open up the file manager. And you'll notice it will open it up in the text editor. So the text editor can edit text. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can align things if you wish to. I think it has some rich features, but. Besides that, Overstrike, oh, that's pretty fancy. Overstrike, ooh, doesn't do anything, of course, because it's unstable as everything. Wrap to fit. You'd actually have to write things to actually get any of the effects that you wish. But anyway, let's just quickly Control S, save that. Alt F4. Uh, no, I don't want to save any of that, actually. Let's drag this to the trash can, and yeah, it goes to the trash can. Go File, and uh, I guess you can uh, shred. There we go, and it deletes everything in the trash can. So. That's pretty much all there really is to CDE. It's not even, like, it's sort of lightweight. Let's run HTOP real quick. 
as you can see it's only really using let's see 396 megabytes of RAM but it doesn't really doesn't do anything it's well like it does it has a terminal emulator as a file manager it's not as good as a window manager window managers are probably more lightweight and they're probably you know actually functional and updated and that kind of stuff and stable this isn't any of that stuff it's just an AUR package that I thought was interesting uh, actually it was recommended by Zergit thanks for recommending this and uh, that's literally it none of the applications that you try to run are actually there this other oh, mail mail is here oh interesting I did not know that was there but you know it's still missing components so I can't actually do anything in it um, so yeah this was CDE thanks for watching uh, goodbye <laughs>